having a horse that knows how to stand tied and stands there quietly and you can trust that they're going to be there when you come back is a really valuable skill. So I'm going to show you guys how to take a horse from this to this. Hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, so we're gonna jump into it here. And uh, the horse that we're gonna be using in this video is a new one that I just got. He's a two-year-old um, and his name is um, On Your Radar, I believe. And um, I'm looking for a good barn name for him. So if you guys know of a good barn name, make sure you drop it in the comments below. And uh, we're gonna be using him for this video because he is very extroverted and likes to move around and look at everything. He's super curious and very, very playful, likes to move his mouth and his feet. And so it's very hard for him to stand still being tied. So what I don't want to do is tie him up and then have him paw and paw and paw and learn to associate standing tied with pawing. Okay. Now, potentially some people would have the idea, let's just tie that horse up for hours and hours and hours. Eventually he'll stand still. Now you could do that, but for me, a young horse, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I like to teach them to find relief being tied. So the approach I'm going to take is I'm going to tie him. If he wants to paw, I'm going to move, bring him out over here in the middle of the arena, put him to work, move his feet a bit for a little bit, take him back and offer him again relief, standing still, being tied. So I'm going to release him to the goal. Uh, recently, I've been getting a lot of questions on how to teach a horse to lay down. So we've put together a great step-by-step -step video on how to teach your horse to lay down. And we have that video along with some other great horsemanship, horse training videos on my Patreon page. So if you guys are interested in showing uh, your support for this channel and watching those other videos, please go uh, check out the link in the description below. Um, those of you that have been watching my videos for a while, you know that I'm really big on the connection. Um, and what I mean by connection is him mentally understanding that it's his job to stand still being tied there and that he wants to be there. <laughs> Not just that I have him tied up and I'm controlling him, making him be there. Now, as he gets older, I'm gonna progress that and we'll, we can spend longer and longer being tied up. Um, and I would use a very similar strategy if I had a horse that would paw, you know, say in a stall at feeding time, or if I had a horse that pawed in a horse trailer, something like that. So, um, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it and uh, we'll see you guys in the video. So he still needs to learn some groundwork and that sort of thing. But the, the initial point that I wanna make about teaching a horse to tie is if you have a young one, don't expect them to just show up and just tie perfectly. Set them up for success by moving their feet and getting them in a situation where they would want to stand tied. So if they paw for a really long time, you might end up teaching them, and especially if you untie them before they stop pawing, you might end up indirectly teaching them to paw when tied up. Um, and so I'm gonna, because he's just learning this, I'm gonna to try to set him up for success by getting him into a place mentally where he wants to stand still to begin with, okay? So we're just gonna do a little bit of groundwork here, move him around, and then we're gonna offer him a chance to stand tied. I would also make sure that you've taught your horse to follow a feel from the halter really well. So we'll show that in a minute as well. So I'm not doing anything super specific here. I'm just kind of generally moving him around. Now, there's two ways I could do this. I could tie him up and leave him there and say, when you finally stand quiet and you quit pawing, I'm going to untie you. And if I had an older horse that had already been tied up a bunch, but not long enough, that sort of thing, I might consider doing that. But he's, um, he's just a baby. He's just a two-year-old. And so I want to teach him to find relief being tied up. So I just got busy. I moved his feet around. And now I'm going to tie him. And if we come over here, uh, Gracie, I'm gonna, while he's tied, I'm going to talk about this a little bit. So I'm going to tie him. And if he, if he wants to start pawing and dancing around, I'm going to uh, take him off the tie and put him back to work. So he's going to learn work is over here, relief is over here. So already, uh, just by moving him around, um, he's, he's more cooperative and wanting to stand still just because mentally he's quieter. He's, he's more relaxed. So a lot of horses are antsy and anxious and can't stand still, not because they really are full of tons of energy, but more from emotionally, they're a little more anxious. Okay. So the more we get a horse settled and calm and confident, 
the, the easier it is for them to stand still and, and be tied. Now, the other thing I want to do with this is build how long he can stand still for. So right now, I'm going to expect, um, you know, I don't know what his, all of his history is with being tied up. Um, I know he's been tied before, but I don't know for how long. <laughs> and uh, he's, very, he's a very, very playful horse, and uh, you can see that. So that's not going to be what causes me to, to ask him to move his feet. He can chew on that rope. It doesn't hurt anything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on the pawing. And you can see where yesterday he kind of dug a, a trench around the, the pad here. So let me talk a little bit about this wall. So Gracie, if you could come on over here. Um, so, so let me talk about how I have him tied here. I have him tied high, so that's one scenario that you can see. Um, you can also see that he's attached to rubber, okay? So if you were to pull back, he's not gonna hit it hard. The rubber is gonna stretch a little bit, so there's a lot less risk of him hurting um, his, his neck. Um, the next thing, you'll, and then the fact that he's tied high is if he pulls back, his front feet are gonna come off the ground. This is important because, um, okay, so there he started pawing. I'm gonna interrupt my story here. And uh, I'm going to back him up kind of abruptly. And then uh, we're going to put him back to work. So I don't know how many minutes that was. You guys probably know from watching. Three, four, something like that. Put him back to work here. And i got to do this with enough energy that he feels a little bit of pressure from me. I can't just bring him out here and go really slow and really quiet. Um, it's it's got to be enough that he wants to, to me to be quiet and go back to being tied. Now, there's probably some people watching this video thinking to themselves, well, just tie him up and leave him there for a long time. And then there's other people thinking, oh, I would never tie my horse up like that. <laughs> and and there's, they're kind of both right, they're both wrong. There is a middle of the road, um, as there is with so many things. And so I want my horse to have the opportunity to really learn to stand tied because it's a very, very handy thing for them to know when you take them to shows and the trailer, um, teaching them to yield to steady pressure. There's just a lot of things that are really helpful about a horse that knows how to tie well. Now, having said that, most of the time when I'm tying a horse um, in my trailer or at a show or at a clinic, I tie them, I wrap them on a rail and I tie them to something where it's not solid, okay? But in my arena here, I will take a few sessions and make sure I go out of my way to teach him to stand tied to something that is solid like this. Okay, so again, I'm bringing him back up here and give him the opportunity to find relief being tied. So I don't wanna um, mix up anything. I wanna get right to being tied here. Keep the pattern going. Drop my leader up here and uh, give him a chance and now we can uh, we can resume our conversation here about um, teaching him to stand tied. So I think I was talking about the wall being solid. You can expect most horses that don't know how to tie um, to want to paw uh, at the wall. Okay, and so if I had boards there or something that wasn't solid, I run the risk of him putting his foot through there and getting hurt. So this is very, very safe, sandy, sandy footing. Uh, the rubber mat's there so that they can't paw uh, too deep. I train a lot of horses. I have a lot of different horses come through here that some know how to stand well, some don't, and um, it, it saves me a little bit of work <laughs> in the long run. So that's kind of generally my, my tie setup. I got a heavy duty snap and rope on there that's not gonna break if you were to pull back into it. But I also would not tie a horse up that I didn't think was ready. So if I had a horse that I knew was just gonna pull back immediately because they didn't understand steady pressure, that sort of thing, I wouldn't just tie them up and let them, let them work it out. I would, because you could do that, you know, this is strong enough that they wouldn't be able to break it. But I am all about setting horses up, preparing them for what we're going to ask them to do. And um, yeah, this is a, this is a much better, <laughs> better approach. So um, I, you know, I wait till the horse is ready for that, that lesson. I don't want to operate with extreme levels of um, you know, pressure and anxiety. You know, I want to operate where they're learning. I want to challenge them to, to get out of their comfort zone, but I, I want to do it within reason. Um, yeah, so this is going a little better. So now we can wait for a while, and if, if, my, if I get impatient before he does, meaning I get ready to do something, I might take him off, move him again, and put him back there. Um, I don't have to wait for him to paw. I want him to find relief standing still. I don't want to just take him up there and tie him up and see what happens. Okay, that's not what this is about. Um, I, I also do believe in teaching them to learn to tie to something solid 
so that if there was a situation where he had to be tied up, he could understand that pressure and be patient there. Uh, but at the same time, we're going to go through all these steps to make sure it's his idea. This is also true um, with trailer loading. So let's say you put your horse in the trailer and they want to paw. If they're pawing in the trailer, it means that they're anxious in there, okay? Now, there's other reasons that can cause a horse to paw. If we went through here with the feed car right now, he'd probably start pawing because they, they want that, that feed. And that can be a bad habit for the horse to get into. So, so it's not, all reasons aren't the same, but I think this, this technique and strategy would work uh, for a variety of different reasons of why the horse is pawing, okay? Um, but again, make sure they know, make sure they're relaxed enough. There we go. Make sure they're understanding how to follow a feel off the halter. And uh, then go ahead and take the time to do this lesson with them. particular horse is very playful and he likes to, to goof around and do a bunch of things and so by me moving his feet more over there he's happier to stand still when I bring him over to here so um, so we're going to keep at this here I think you guys can kind of see the idea that we have going on here and uh, if you guys are enjoying watching these videos make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one